Hello everyone, welcome back to Fraud on the Telly. In today's video, we'll be breaking down the newest episode of Attack on Titan, Thaw. We're breaking down all the epic moments, like the return of Annie, what's happening to Falco, as well as Aaron's plan to trample every inch of the world. If you enjoyed the video and learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Check out all our other Attack on Titan content, like our full breakdown of the life and death of Ymir Fritz, and all of Aaron's Titan forms and abilities. Okay, let's crack on. Our episode begins in the Paths realms. Aaron has used the powers of the Founding Titan to summon every Eldian in the world to the coordinate, and makes clear his plans. Use the Wall Titans to trample every inch of the world to ensure the safety of all of the Eldians. Remember, Eldians are the subjects of Ymir and are linked to the Founding Titan. Because of this, Aaron can communicate with them directly through the paths, or even manipulate their body chemistry if he so choose. Flash to Marley, where many of the Eldians snap back to reality, one being Mr. Leonhardt, Annie's father. If that wasn't foreshadowing for events to come, I guess the title Thaw really gives it away. Flash to Gabby and Reiner. Reiner is hurt and recovering in his human form after his fight with Aaron. Gabby is still carrying the anti-Titan rifle she used to blow Aaron's head off. Gabby is looking for Falco, who last we saw had just eaten the Jaw Titan and is presumed to have transformed back to a human. Reiner theorized he was probably taken by Jean and Connie as the first Titan transformation knocks you out and impacts your memory, so it would have been easy for them to grab him. Reiner is heavily injured. He reveals his titan armor had come undone and a piece of the wall had crushed him. This was due to Eren undoing all titan hardening when he destroyed the wall, so in theory all titan hardening would be destroyed across the world. Hypothetically, that means all the titan hardening left in Marley from Eren's battle would also vanish. Hence why later on in the episode, Annie is set free from her hardened crystal. Reiner tells Gabby to run for a set of airships in the south. Reiner, it seems, has accepted defeat. He believes there's nothing they can do to stop Eren, that the rumbling is inevitable. All they can do is run in hope as the wall titans descend upon the world. Gabby refuses to accept this, and yet another awesome moment that parallels Eren. Gabby puts her hair up, and like that, we see her transform from this scared little girl to the elite soldier that she is. A lot of the fanbase hates Gabby, which is funny because I love her. The amount of character growth she goes through is just so good. Seeing her realize that everything she has been taught is a lie, there was no devils after all. And you know, the Aaron parallels just don't hurt. Flash over to Connie, Jean, Arm, and Mikasa. The group has Falco passed out. We see the lines on his face, indicating his transformation from a shifter to human form, as Falco has possession of the Jaw Titan. It's interesting to note the shape of the lines here on his face that are unique to his Titan form. Some subtle foreshadowing. Jon seems to have come to the conclusion the rest of the world deserves the rumbling, all because they labeled Eldians as devils and tried to slaughter them. Behind them, as they talk, Aaron is in his gargantuan founding titan form, lumbers on with thousands and thousands of colossal titans flanking him. Can we just talk about how big Aaron's form is here? These colossal titans are dwarfed in comparison to him. The form measured roughly 300 meters and contained massive rib-like protrudence that extended from a long spine. Its spine linked with a bony upper torso, ending in a head that roughly resembles the head of the attack titan, with either longer hair and exposed flesh on his chin that resembles a beard. Inside the titan, Eren's head was disconnected from his body as he had been decapitated. The titan would walk with its rib cage undulating, similar to that of a millipede's legs. Scary stuff. The group have come to the conclusion that Eren is sacrificing the rest of humanity to save the Eldian people. It seems Jon is also in the mood for sacrificing, as he plans on feeding Falco to a titan to save someone. For example, Commander Pixis, who, remember, drank Zeke's spinal fluid and is now a pure titan. Connie has other plans, as he wants to feed Falco to his mother, who, if you remember, was stuck when she transformed into a titan, and Connie has been visiting her for the last four years, since the day they got the meta unlock that titans are in fact Eldians. The group are attacked by several pure titans, Connie takes Falco and dips, leaving Mikasa and Aramin and Jon to clean up the mess. The pure titans have been running loose on the city, as Zeke is no longer there to control them. One dives towards Kaya, the adopted daughter of Mr. Browse, Sasha's dad. Just as it seems she's finito, Dunzo kid, Kaya calls out for her big sis, Sasha. Out of nowhere, Gavi goes full Rambo, shooting the titan's jaw off, then jumping, sticking the barrel of the anti-titan rifle into its mouth, blowing its head off. Gabby, two out of two for blowing titan's head offs. Gabby, the girl who killed Kaya's sister, has now come full circle, saving Kaya from a titan just like Sasha did. A group of Eldian soldiers arrive and question if Gabby is the brat and Valor from Marley. As it seems they are about to shoot her, Kaya steps in, speaking up saying they are just a family that tends stables. Double character progression today, gamers. Remember, it wasn't that many episodes ago, Kaya was trying to stab Gabby in the neck with a butcher knife. We get an epic return of Keith Shaddis as he slays a titan, saving his former cadets. Even after being beaten by these former trainees, Shaddis still returns and saves them, what a chad. Armin, Jean, and Mikasa make their way through the city, cutting down pure titans as they go. They gather on the roof of the tower with all of the thunder spears they could find. The soldiers lead the pure titan through the city to the base of the tower as Jean and the others jump off, slaying the group with their thunder spears. As they look over the side, they realize their old commander and friend Pixis is there waiting for them. This scene was rough, man. The characters having to systematically kill their allies, comrades, and former friends who were unlucky enough to drink Zeke's wine. Throughout it all, the Wall Titans continue to march, a never-ending stream of them. It's amazing and almost 
every far zoom shot we get, they are ever present, continually marching forward, continually endless. The episode ends as Armin gets the info from Gabby that Reinar lost his armor when the walls collapse. Armin connects the dots that Aaron has undone all the hardening. We flash over to Annie, who we see lies awake on the floor, having been released from her crystal. So, what is in store for the future of the world? It seems Armin and Gabby are the only ones who are willing to stop Aaron, while many others seem content to let Aaron destroy the world. A better question is, how could they even stop Aaron and his endless army of colossal titans? Meanwhile, what's to become of Falco and Connie? Will he actually feed Falco to his mother? But I think the real question is, what the fuck would Connie's mom look like as a jaw titan? Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it or learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Go check out some of our other AOT content, and I'll see you in the next video. As always, guys, peace, love, adieu.